Well, the Treasury Department is taking a closer look at the student loan situation and how it impacts the cost of college and affects borrowers, taxpayers, and economic growth. Sharon Epperson here now with more on what the Treasury Department is thinking and doing. Well, Tyler, student loan debt in this country has grown to over $1.2 trillion, and nearly 90 percent of all student loans are federal loans. The government is now growing increasingly concerned that student debt may threaten to choke off U.S. economic growth as loan payments force households to delay home and auto purchases, saving for retirement, and limit other forms of borrowing, investment, and spending. Sarah Bloom Raskin, the new Deputy U.S. Treasury Secretary, talked to me about why the Treasury is examining these issues. The student loan debt issues have a lot of connections to the economy. And anything that's inter of interest to the economy is of interest to the Treasury Department. So we want to take a very careful look at the amount of student debt that's accumulating and try to understand with some granularity and specificity what it's due to and whether or not it's dangerous. Are you already seeing dangerous consequences of student loan debt? Well, the first thing to think about when you think about student debt is that it's really an investment. It's an investment in people's potential. So we want to make sure that that is something that is a possibility for people, that it's a viable possibility, and that when people uh, take advantage of it, they're being given the flexibility in terms of uh, repayment and, being the, and, and in terms of interest rates and being able to afford it. One of the things that um, has also come up in the research from the Congressional Budget Office is the amount of money that has been made on student loans, $41 billion last year. And that begs the question from many critics as to why the government is making money on these loans when the affordability still for many is, is not there and that there, there's the potential of default down the road and tremendous debt. One thing we want to make sure we do right is that we give students and their families the opportunity to compare so that they can compare different educational options and compare schools and compare levels of debt and uh, do standardized comparisons across schools, uh, across colleges, so that uh, students are well informed before they go into a, a debt situation. Raskin admits that the Treasury Department does not have all of the answers, but she's on a mission to make sure they ask the right questions. She says, if we can understand the patterns that lead to delinquency and default, we may be able to predict and even preempt such outcomes to the benefit of borrowers, taxpayers, and economic growth. Tyler. Sharon, how can the government prevent people from taking on debt they can't afford to repay? Well, one of the things that she says is that, that it needs to be a concerted effort of colleges and universities, of the government, as well as the loan servicers, and that they need to provide tools, whether that's going to the website like the Department of Education's website, to their college scorecard, and seeing exactly how much debt you may take out and what type of job you may have down the road. Will that make sense for you to take out that much of a loan? So if people who shouldn't be taking on so much debt do and ultimately get into trouble, what, what, is, the, what is the ripple through to the well, economy? Is, the ripple effect is what they're very concerned about, because if you have debt and you're not and you're paying it over a 20-year period or more, that is on your credit report. That can impact not only your ability to buy a home or your car loan, but even the job that you might get if your credit is impacted. So they're looking at those issues very carefully. Are these loans, a lot of them, bundled together and securitized and then resold the way home mortgages were? Well, one of the things that they're looking at is how people are taking out these loans and whether they're taking out the federal direct loans, whether they're adding to those loans with private loans, and what they can control, and 90 percent of the loans are federal loans, but there are a lot of private loans out there. That's hurting a lot of people as Interest well. Interest rates on those loans, there's always been a, a, a kerfuffle about when they were the rates were going to go up or not. Right. Well, July 1st, they always revisit it, and we are expecting that we're going to see a lot of the studies show rates will go up. All right, Sharon Epperson, right. thanks very much.